Ladies and gents, it's GBU time. Who's ready? So today I'm going to be covering the hows that you guys, one of the most requested emails, messages that I've been getting for me to do a GBU. You guys always ask for these series. I know you guys love it. And I try to put it as often as I can. It is a little bit more time consuming than the regular videos. But without any further ado, today we're going to talk about Mason Francis Kershaw. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, of course, the GBU UO in the house of Mason Francis Kirsch. And if you guys watch my video on perfumers, I did spoke immensely about this particular perfumer, Francis K, Francis Kirtjan. Francis K has an amazing nose and has created hundreds of great fragrances, including one of the trendsetter fragrances that everybody knows. This one right here, the torso, of course, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans, back in 1995 when he was only 25 years old. Fast forward to 2009, he came up with his own blend, his own house, Maison Francis Kershaw, of course, 10 years in the making from 2009 to 2019. Today I'm going to tell you guys my favorites from this line, the ones I love, the ones I don't like so much. Keep in mind that the fragrances I'm going to be mentioning here in this video are only the ones that I've owned and the ones that I actually have experience with. There are dozens of fragrances. I believe they have over 45 fragrances in their portfolio and counting. We're going to kick things off here with one that most people refer to as an elixir of pleasures. Of course, we're talking about Grand Soir, this 2000 2016 release, which is just an amazing composition, very opulent, very resonant. If you like benzoin, vanilla, it's a very vanillic, uh, ambery, sweet kind of a scent. Definitely very sensual. I think it's more of an evening scent, but definitely a great sensual composition from the house of Maison Francis Kirch. And if you haven't checked out Grand Soir, I highly recommend. Next up, we have a fragrance that I actually wore for many years as one of my signature work scents. I absolutely love this fragrance. I kind of forgot about it. I'm happy to revisit this fragrance. This one's called Lumiere Noir. Now, Lumiere Noir is a rose patchouli and cinnamon kind of trifecta of a fragrance. Great as a signature scent. If you want something captivating, very alluring, if you like the note of rose, definitely check this one out. You know, when you compare this to like another rose fragrance like Lyric Man, this is not going to be a gemmy rose, but in instead it's going to be a very natural rose. Definitely a great scent. If you like rose scents, I highly recommend checking this one out for a signature scent. Speaking of signature scents, if you like barbershop scents with lavender, this is their answer for the barbershop manly kind of scents. This is Plurial Au Masculine. Plurial Masculine was released in 2014. As you can see here, I wore a lot of this fragrance. It's definitely one of my favorites for work scent, daily wear. If I'm hankering for a nice barbershop feel, I think this scent does it like no other. A very well balanced, very well blended scent with an earth the undertone with the note of vetiver here that's just done to perfection. If you like barbershop feel scents, definitely one that you don't want to miss. Now here's one that I discovered about two years ago and it's definitely going to make my top spring scents this year. If you like citrus aromatic scents, this is perfection. Great for spring, summer, warm days. If you want something to just pick up and wear and feel great, this is a feel good type scent. It's invigorating. It's just one of those fragrances. This is Aqua Universalis, not the Forte. This is the original one. Forte, on my skin, it's a little bit too floral. This is a little bit more citric and aromatic, which I do enjoy. So if you like citrus aromatic, this is definitely one you want to pick up. Very androgynous, anyone can rock this. And it's like one of those effervescent, invigorating, just feel good type scents that you definitely want to check out if you like the citrus aromatic genre. Next up, we have a fragrance that is criminally dismissed by the fragrance community. This is called Amiris Ohm. An absolute fantastic signature all year round scent in my honest and humble opinion. If you're looking for one fragrance in your wardrobe that conveys class, elegance, with a hint of exoticness, definitely check this one out. With notes like iris, coffee, coconut, dark chocolate, this stuff here is uncanny. Amir's Om is a fragrance that I guarantee once you try it, you'll always have it in your wardrobe. I know I have it. Funny story with Amir's Om is I heard about this fragrance through the groups, the fragrance community groups like the one I run, the Emporium of Sense on Facebook. And I've always been intrigued by this fragrance. I've always been cautious about pulling the trigger because, you know, these fragrances here, they retail anywhere from like two and a quarter to 300 and change. They're not cheap. So I figure, you know, the best way to actually pull the trigger on this fragrance is actually to try it. So try it before you buy it is actually a motto that I adopted a couple years ago in the fragrance community because I was spending thousands of dollars in blind buys. And a perfect way to do that is actually with my partner, MyFragranceSamples.com, which I've actually done that. You know, a while ago, I picked up a little decan of this fragrance, Amira's Ohm, and I tried it for you know a couple of weeks 
and I really fell in love with the fragrance and then I went ahead and picked up a full bottle. So if you guys haven't checked out myfragrancesamples.com, you wanna check out any high-end fragrances, new releases, you know, niche fragrances, you know, top of the line niche, just like, you know, the ones we're talking about today, Maison, Francis Cartron, check out myfragrancesamples.com. Use my code MAX15 for an additional 15% off on already amazing competitive prices. The reason why I love myfragrancesamples.com and I partnered with them is because I know the owner, fantastic guy, fast shipping, amazing samples, free samples with every order, and not just any sample. If you get an MFK, you're gonna get top shelf fragrances as well as a free sample. So no questions asked, 100% authenticity. If you guys haven't heard of myfragrancesamples.com, you are missing out. I'm telling you, if you watching this video have experience with this particular co company like myself before I partnered them, I want you to please do everyone a favor and comment down in the comment section below letting people know your experience with myfragrancesamples.com and the owner at Mark Mobley. Like I said, try it before you buy it. It's a great way to save money and really try the fragrance, live with the fragrance before you actually commit to a full pricey bottle. Next up, we have a buttery, creamy, amber, orange blossom, African orange blossom nonetheless, and a hint of cedar. This particular fragrance here is called Apon Pour Homme, which is another one that's criminally underrated. Now, this fragrance here reminds me of another work from Francis Kurtzian, which is this one right here, a Jean Paul Gaultier, or Gaultier 2, Gaultier Squared. This is going to be a little bit more, more mass appealing, a lot sweeter than this particular fragrance, as you can see from the color of the juice. This particular one here is very well composed, very well blended. Like I said, three simple notes, but very, very complex blend here of an amazing block. If you like orange blossom with a hint of cedar, which makes this very, very enticing. And of course, the Sweet Amber. This is definitely one you wanna check out if you like amber, if you like orange blossom, you love cedar. It's that trifecta of notes blended to perfection. Here's another one from this particular line that to me is a killer blend that no one is really talking about. This is called Absolute Pour Le Soir, Absolute for the Evening. This stuff, this stuff here is just seduction in a bottle. You're talking about honey, uh, spicy rose with uh, smoky incense, creamy sandalwood with a touch of vanilla benzoin, which gives us almost a syrupy sweetness, but it's really not overbearing. It's done just right with some spices. This stuff here is heavenly. If you like Back to Black from By Killian, this is going to be in the same vein. Just one of those heavenly elixirs that you must check out if you like those type scents. Let's talk about this next one that was released as a Russian exclusive, but it made its way here into the US. This is called Ciel de Gum. I absolutely love this one. If you like cinnamon type scents, you're going to love this. It's a little bit floral, a little bit ambery, but that red hot peppery cinnamon is going to be very prominent in the beginning. Talk about big red, anyone, the, the, the bubble gum. It's gonna have a little bit of that feel, but it's going to move into the ambery, sweet floral type of dry down. A little bit powdery as well as it gets to the dry down. This is definitely a multifaceted uh, fragrance. It starts off that spicy big red gum, moves into that ambery sweet heart, and it dries down into that floral ambery dry down. A great scent. I absolutely love this one. If you haven't checked out, definitely give this one a chance if you can. Now let's talk about the oud uh, compositions that I have in my collection. I'm not huge on oud, but I picked up these two because from everything I've tried from this particular fragrance house, these are the best oud fragrances in my opinion. In fact, if I ever did a top 10 oud fragrances of all time, these will definitely make the list. Of course, I'm talking about oud silk mood and my favorite oud satin mood. I've actually talked about this fragrance immensely. Oud satin mood is just one of those fragrances. If you want a perfect oud scent, you want something that's not going to be medicinal, pungent, in your face. This stuff here is strong, but it's done in a way that's really smooth and very, you know, captivating with the rose, a little bit of benzoin, it has a little bit of a vanilla uh, backdrop when it gets into the dry down. It's just a oud satin good mood. A great scent that if you haven't checked out, you're missing out. If you want to start to get into the oud fragrances, this is oud done to perfection. Now when it comes to silk mood, this is a little bit more medicinal. Starts off a little bit pungent with that rose and oud combo. It, it, it's not very pleasant to me in the first 30 minutes or so, but then the magic begins. As soon as it gets into the heart, it starts to get really good. What I love about Silk Mood is when you get into the 30 minute mark, you know, of this fragrance, of wearing this fragrance, a note of chamomile will come to place, which will give this a nice calming tea vibe to this fragrance, which is quite breathtaking. So these are my two favorite ouds from this line, but I think Satin Mood is definitely my favorite, and this is no slouch either. Check these out. I think these are one of the best oud fragrances in the market, period. This last one here from my collection of MFKs is one that needs absolutely no introduction. If you're part of this community in any capacity, if you watch videos, top lists, 
you know about this fragrance. This is called Baccarat Rouge 540. This is the Eau de Parfum, which happens to be my favorite. This is one of those scents that is going to get you and everybody else around you coming back for more, period. So let's see if you guys know my taste and you guessed any of my picks correctly. Let's start with the good, of course, and this is one that never lets me down. Whenever I need to pick up a fragrance that will carry me through the day, and definitely not let me down with the performance and the way it smells. It's definitely one that I absolutely love. This could have been one of the most underrated from this house, but it's definitely the good in my opinion. This is Amiri's Ohm. Amira's Ohm is definitely one of those scents that if you're looking for a perfect signature scent that will make a statement, definitely look this one up. Now the bad, as you can possibly imagine, I'm not a big fan of oud fragrances, so the bad will go to an oud fragrance, which is really not bad. It's really hard to say that I have a bad fragrance right now in my collection from this particular brand. I've had other ones that I traded or sold or gave it away, you know, and these are definitely the ones that I absolutely love. Now this particular one will get the bad just because for the first 30 minutes or so, it is a little bit too medicinal for my taste, me not really liking oud fragrances, but then after the 30 minute mark, like I said, it turns into a magical scent. And this is none other than Oud Silk Mood. It's going to get the bad just because of that little 30 minute or so mark of that initial medicinal kind of a feel that you get with this fragrance. But if you have the patience and you like Rose Oud fragrances, this is definitely a great one. Now the ugly from this particular brand, again, it's very hard to say that anything made by MFK is actually an ugly scent, but from my taste, I don't really like floral scents too much. And I actually had a bottle of 754, which I don't currently own anymore. I actually gave it away, gave it away to my mother. So 754 is actually a fragrance that was a little bit overbearing when it came to the floral aspect of the fragrance. And I really didn't like it too much. So in my opinion, for my nose, for my taste, that would get the ugly. So ladies and lads, you want to talk about a very underrated fragrance from this house. I have to give it to this one right here. It's a shame that no one's really talking about much of this fragrance. You hear a lot about Grand Soir, but people are missing out on this particular jam right here. Absolute pour le soir, absolute for the evening. I'm telling you right now, if you guys want a very sensual, seductive, sexy elixir that's going to carry you through the night and make a statement, make a great impression, and have people following you around to know what you're wearing, guys, check this one out. Do not dismiss this underrated gem. In my humble opinion, one of the most underrated from this house. This is actually the one that gives me the most compliments. It was love at first sniff. It's one that always gets me compliments every time I wear. This is androgynous. I mean, the positives go on and on and on. But because this fragrance has gotten so much popularity over the years, and rightfully so, it is a great juice, of course, Baccarat Rouge 540. This has actually spun off some copies. We actually seen fragrance houses like Parfums Vintage release uh, a fragrance called, I believe, Sunset in Heaven. There's also an Ariana Grande fragrance called Cloud, and they're both supposed to smell kind of close to this fragrance. I haven't actually smelled those fragrances, but from what I hear, they're very similar to this fragrance. This is the pioneer of this genre, and Baccarat Rouge 540 is just an amazing scent. Overrated in the sense that so many people talk about it, but you got to give credit where it's due. This stuff here is just heavenly. If you haven't checked this out, you're missing out. If you want something that's going to give you compliments and get you smelling amazing, this is definitely one you guys want to procure. Now, do you guys agree with my choices? If not, please sound off in the comment section below. Let me know which ones I should try that I haven't talked about in this video, and also which one are your top favorites from MFK. If you guys liked this video and found it helpful in any way, please don't forget to share your support, leave a like, subscribe for more, and also enable your notification icon. That way you'll never miss out on future content. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for tuning in. Smell well, enjoy your journey, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.